Good morning, Primetime Squad. I just want to play this short little um, preview of my review of part one of the Netflix series, When They See Us. This is just a small preview. If you enjoy this, please make sure you check out all of my reviews on this show, parts one through four, on my YouTube channel, Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews. But the show, When They See Us, is about the prosecution of five innocent juvenile defendants known as the Central Park Five in the Central Park Jogger case in 1990 and how the five boys was maliciously prosecuted racially discriminated and how the police and prosecutors even though they didn't have any solid evidence like no witnesses no fingerprints no dna no sperm no nothing but the version of the story by those five boys which turned out to be a confession orchestrated and coerced by the police leading to the black and brown boys self-incriminating themselves for the rape of jogger trisha mealy please check out this short preview of my review of part one of when they see us and make sure you like this video make sure you share this video thank you very much so when the cops came through everybody took off everybody the police then rolled up they started chasing people they caught a few people some people got away but they ended up catching raymond santana the hispanic um antron and kevin you know they almost got away they you saw them jumping a wall you know scaling a wall and trying to get away um kevin once he got over the wall he was hiding in the bushes he was hiding out in the bushes <laughs> but Antron, he was up there, you know, trying to get away, and he got attacked. And when you saw that boy, like, that that was so sad. This little boy, I mean, he probably stood maybe five feet tall. Some of these kids were really small. A few of them was kind of big. Like, Raymond, the Hispanic, when the cops were questioning him, they said, Are you sure? You only in, you only in the ninth grade? No, he was in the eighth grade. He said, are you sure? And he was like, yeah, I'm sure. And they was like, well, you awfully big because some of them cops was trying, was hoping and praying that they were 16 years old because they wanted to interrogate them and interview them without their parents around. So you know it's illegal. They ain't supposed to be interviewing no little kids and interrogating no little kids and you know all that stuff without calling their parents. They supposed to tell them kids what's going on, what's going down. Um, who's your uh <laughs> closest contact? Your mama, your grandma, your daddy. You know we need to call somebody. Mm mm. They didn't wait. They didn't wait. They hauled all them kids in. They hauled in Kevin. They hauled in Yusuf. They hauled in Raymond. <laughs> and they got Antron. Now, the little boy, one of the little boys got attacked he, by the cop. The cop was trying to um, catch him. He ended up jumping on him, attacking, not attacking. I don't, well, he ended up attacking him. I say that because <laughs> he ended up hitting that little boy over the head and busting his head open. The boy's eye was like this big. And, and it wasn't like he was like, Mm, I wouldn't call it resisting arrest. They all was running. They all was running. The cop caught one of them, jumped on his back, and the boy turned around like, ah, he's just screaming because he's like, ah, you know, what's going on? And the cop just took his helmet off his head and just, bam, right across his face and told him to shut up and be still. I mean, I felt that blow. When I say he hit that boy, like... He hit that boy hard as heck. And then we saw later, you know, his eye was like way out here. It was like black and blue. He had all kind of bruises all over his face and everything. And he was so little. He was like so little. But anyway, some of the kids was 14. Some of them was 15. And one of them was uh 16. And that was Corey. That was Corey. But anyway, I'm just making sure I don't miss any comments. You'll be watching tonight. Okay, Natalie Loyalist. 
And uh, Donna says she'll be watching tonight too. Um, I'm paying for it, finally getting something I'm paying for. <laughs> yes, should I pay for my Netflix and my Hulu? Shoot, they're the best thing since cable. <laughs> Let me tell you, they're the best thing since cable. But yeah, so um, they hauled them all back to the station. And I was like, when he hit that little boy, I thought the boy was dead at first or unconscious. That's just how hard he hit that boy. But for y'all who haven't watched it yet, y'all see, y'all see, he cracked that boy with that helmet on his head so hard. I was just, he was just like, he was gone. He was gone. He was out. Shoot, he was out. But then after that, um, the next thing we saw, the detectives, they were really young. Yes, they were really young. Miss Nolans, you sent me an IG message? Okay, I'll check it. I'll check it. But yeah, they were really, really young. And I was like, when the, when the detectives and the cops got there, when they got to the park, and they started looking, you know, looking for evidence, searching the grounds, you know, where that female jogger was attacked, you know, assaulted and raped. Um, they was trying to, you know, figure out, you know, what happened, you know, when it happened, of course. Um, they said between 10 and 11 p.m., she was running on East Drive, struck in the head, and then dragged in the bushes. This is what happened to this lady. But once the once the detectives got back to the precinct and started looking over all the evidence, you know, looking over everything they had so far, they had no witnesses. No witnesses, none at all. None at all. Um the main uh <laughs> the lady over the sex crimes, Linda. She was like, "Y'all ain't got no witnesses. Y'all ain't picked up no bums. Y'all ain't picked up no gays." When I heard that, I was like, what? They trying to pin it on everybody. Talking about, y'all didn't pick up no bums, no gays. Like, okay, are they saying gay men back then used to attack white women, joggers, gay men? I was like, okay, okay. I didn't heard it all now. <laughs> I didn't heard it all now. I was like, oh, damn. She was really, but she was headstrong like really headstrong on trying to you know pin somebody on this murder like asap like right away like the 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 attack the rape just happened and already they trying to pin it on somebody by like midnight you know before the pumpkin turns back <laughs> i'm like dang but then you know another cop was like you know what there's a bunch of kids you know on the north side of the park you know that said they was over there wild and out you know just just wilding out, just goofing off, running around, playing tag, you know, like a lot of them said they were doing. Um, but it was no witnesses. No witnesses at all. Um, the parents, the parents of the children that were in it at the precinct that was being questioned, detained, um, they the ones that knew that their children were there, the, the ones that knew. They came. Raymond's father came to the precinct. You know, he to find that's the uh Hispanic guy. The Hispanic guy. So his son Raymond and his father's name was Raymond Senior, by the way. Um, Kevin Richardson, his mother came, even though she's really sickly, she did come, but then she had to leave and go get some medicine because I mean she's on an oxygen tank, she got tubes in her nose, you know, all that kind of stuff. So his mom was really sick. And had to leave to go, you know, home and get some medicine. Um, then was the two that came down there. The other parents, they had no idea that their children was downtown. They had no idea why their children was being held, what kind of questions they were being asked. They had no idea at all. Like, the detectives, they didn't make no phone calls. They didn't make no phone calls. Like, for instance, one of the guys named Yusuf, his mother, she found out because she was making calls around to friends and family. Like, this boy know he's supposed to be in by such and such time. You know, it's it's the weekend, but still, you know, they young. They young. So he got to be in by 10. She gets a call, like, hours and hours and hours later from somebody else. Like, oh, I heard they picked up some boys at the park. Maybe your son down there. So, a lot of the parents had no idea where their children was. But that detective, Linda Fairstein, she was so convinced 
so convinced that the kids that they had picked up were the ones who was harassing the bicyclists, beating up people, and raped that woman. She was convinced with no evidence, no witnesses, no evidence, no witnesses. But she was convinced they had something to do with it just because they was in the doggone park. I'm like, this man, y'all got to watch this show. I'm telling you, because I was like, I, I was calling her all kind of names. I ain't even going to lie. I was calling her all kind of names. I'm like, this heifer. I mean, she was like one of those people where you wouldn't want to have a badge and a gun. She was one of those people. Now, mind you, she 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 was one of the prosecutors, but she was one of those people you did not want to have a badge and a gun and be at the wrong place at the wrong time. She she struck me as that type of person, like like a racist. That's that's how she struck me. So again, again, y'all y'all check it out. But anyway, because of the fact that in the last year this happened in 1989 and 1988, there were like 3,412 rapes. In New York, um, New York City, uh, 3,412 rapes. And because of that, that's why she was so, you know, determined to find the rapist in this situation. And even though the other uh, cops and detectives were like, but we have no, how we got a case? We, we don't have no evidence. We don't have no witnesses. How we got a case? And she was like, oh, we going to have a case we're going to have a case. These rapes are an epidemic and we need to take control of this situation. So they were going to make a case. They were going to create a case. Child. Mm -mm -mm. Yes. That wife, she, Heather, <laughs> when I say she was on my nerves, she was on my nerves. Hey, Glazy, how you doing? Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs> but yeah, and I'm like, whew, Lord. Now, um, Raymond, the Hispanic, when his father, Raymond Sr., Raymond Sr., when he came in, um, he had to be at work at night. So he was sleeping through the evening. You know, some people who work overnight, <laughs> they get home, they might watch TV, they might eat, they might run errands during the daytime, and then around 3 o'clock, they hit the sack because they have to be up at night to go to work. So they was giving him shit, talking about, where was you? While your son was running around in Central Park, where was you? And he was like, I had to work. I, I You know, I had to work. He's like, what my boy do? He don't give me no problems. What did he do? What did he do so bad? Why is he here? And they was like, just giving him shit like, your son out there wilding out. Because <laughs> the cops, oh, that the funny part was, one of the funny parts was, the cops didn't know what wilding out mean. So they was up there like, what's wilding out? What does that mean? When a kid wild out? What they wilding? What, what they doing? I was like, <laughs> I was cracking up. Because they was like, hmm, your son out there wilding out. In the park. And they had no idea. They had no idea what wild and out mean. They thought wild and out means like assaulting people, beating people, and possibly raping people. When wild and out is usually just kids acting silly, acting goofy, just having a good time, just being kids. Mm-mm-mm. Yep. You right, Natalie Nolan. It's a lot of rapists in New York City. New York, yeah. It's a lot of rapists there. Yep. You absolutely right. Back then, yeah, it was a lot going on back then. It's a lot of unsolved crimes from back then because we didn't have a lot of the modern technology that we had today. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of that that we had today, especially with the DNA testing. DNA testing, man, pff, I want to steal a candy bar nowadays. Shoot. <laughs> I want to steal no penny candy nowadays because the DNA testing, you know, has advanced so much. But, um,